Welcome to this screencast where we're going to uh, look at uh, very simp the simplest method I could find of reading user input into a Greenfoot program. I'm Mr. Gauvin and this is for my uh, GCSE students. Uh, previously we have this very simple Greenfoot scenario where we move from our first world uh, to the second one just by clicking on this red button over here and in the second world we've got some uh, message being displayed so if I run this scenario and click on one button and here we've got some something that's being displayed there what I want to show you is how we can input uh, uh, user input something that the, the user or the player is going to type on the keyboard into our program as a string that can then be manipulated or in our case simply uh, uh, printed on our, our um, final screen. So um, I would like to encourage you to search on the internet as much as possible for uh, help on Greenfoot. Um, so instead of just giving you the answer I'd like to show you where I found it to start with and then how I'm going to apply it to my uh, to my scenario. So over here we've got a post on the greenfoot.org uh, forum and this post uh, was a simple question how do you make a text box and here we've got well the two uh, 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 to me uh, most uh, most most interesting uh, participants on the fo forum giving their um, their input and as is often the case Dan post gave a really really good answer over here and this answer is very good for my purpose because it's very simple. We just need to import a Java module into our Greenfoot scenario. So I've just selected it. I'm going to do Control C to copy it. Now I'm going to place the code to uh, to um, to run my uh, my input into my button class. So let's bring the editor for the button class. Oh, I didn't I forgot to delete it. So let's delete and then there it is again. So I've just placed this code that uh, Dan Post was telling us to use. And this is importing a module. So I put it before outside of the code for my class. Let's go back to what uh, Dan Post is telling us to do. So now that I've, we've inputted the module, we just use this code which I will comment in a minute I've just copied it now I'm going to oh where's my there it is I'm going to paste it here so why here because I want this to appear before I move on to the second to the last world so we are creating a string called input value and in that string we place uh, the result of calling this G option pane show input dial dialog and into this method we pass a string please input a value. Let's uh, run our code right now to see what uh, what happens. So when I click on my button I've got a text bo uh, box that's just appeared on my second screen, so I'm going to drag it into the screencast area. There it is. And this just pops up onto the screen and we're asked to input a value. This is brilliant. That's just what we need. Very simple. Let's um, reset our game. So we're going to input a value and that value will go into input value. Now, what I want to do with this variable, I want to pass it as a parameter to the constructor for our level 2 world. Now, in the previous screencast, I've already shown you how to pass, uh, in this case, three integer variables, and I'm simply going to add the result of um, this uh, calling this uh, dialog box. Now that I've done that, uh, if I compile it, I'm going to get an error because at this moment in time, this constructor level 2 only takes three um, 
integer. It doesn't know that I want to add a string. So I need to go to the constructor for my world and edit it. So here's the line that says I take as parameters three integers and I'm going to add and now you're also going to take a string and that string I'm going to call it let's say user input. All right um, now after calling the constructor for the parent class let's put here in a little bit of a space the code what are we going to do with this string well for for now I'm simply going to display the same string back to my user now we've seen how to display something with the code to add a label which is what we've got here we did that last time so we're going to do the same thing. Let's create a new label and then I'm going to call it user label, which is a new label. And in the parameter of a constructor for this label object, what I'm going to, t to pass is it needs a text and then the size of a font. Um, and the text I'm going to pass it is this one here. So let's copy that, place it here, use the same value for the font size. So that's it, I've created a label but right now it doesn't sh it would not show on the screen because we need to call the add object methods of our world class. Um, so what I want to add is our user label we've just created and now I need to give uh, x and y coordinates. So let's just place it in the top left corner of our screen. So 150 should do the trick. OK, um, let's compile the whole of the scenario. It's happy. We run it. Now my dialog box has appeared on my second screen. So I'm dragging it across. Here it comes into the screencast. Let's input a value. We're just going to type the classic hello world string. And when I click OK, the control goes back to my and button code. And then what the button code does next is to display level two. And in the level two, we've got here in the top left, the very same string that um, we've created. Now, of course, I could um, I could choose to add something to this string before displaying it. Um, so let's show you very quickly how to do that. So over here I've got, I'm passing user input to my um, to my uh, um, method. So I could I could create a string. Um, let's call it. Um, Let's just call it user, and then that string would be um, let's say that it's going to be user input, and then we're going to add um, let's add a message we would hard code for the purpose of this uh, demonstration. And I um, actually let's put it the other way around. So let's say we're going to code hello, my name is plus user input. Now I need to change what I pass here as a parameter. So I'm passing this string, which is going to be hello, my name is plus user input. This should compile. Oh, I forgot to put a semicolon. And then if I really want to do a good job, let's bring back the code for our button. And then please enter your name. Right, compile the whole lot. 
and run it. So please enter your name with a typo. My name is Mr. Govin and when I click OK, hello, my name is Mr. Govin. Okay, I'm having a problem with, uh, there's not enough space for the whole message to display, so let's uh, modify this. I need to go back to my level 2 code. So 100 was not enough. Let's give it 300. Um, and then, and then, and then, and then it was in the button code that I've got a typo. Here it is. Enter your name. Right, let's reset the program, compile it again, and run it. Grab my dialog box, bring it back. Is to go out. Perfect, it's all working. Well, I hope this um, you'll find this useful for your scenario, and then join me for the next screencast.